So let's take a look at um, the setup we're in right now. Uh, we got, uh, first of all, let's take a look at a couple of things. Market profile stopped us up here, right? Uh, high value area. But let's go ahead and take a look at what we're in here. Beautiful setup this morning. Uh, these WPT setups, um, I was, um, me and Tina was chatting yesterday, pretty much uh, majority of the day, and the WPTs were just absolutely on fire yesterday. Just a very volatile day, but you can tell the five minute has been nailing these things um, yesterday, or this week, and today. Um, it caught the low here in the morning session. Remember, the WPT is categorized as getting some volume uh, a spike into these lows or highs, catching the wrongly positioned traders. Um, I nicknamed it WPT. Uh, you won't find this indicator anywhere in the world with any other provider. Um, this is my own customized indicator. Um, what I found with Peter Stoudemire over the years with Market Profile, um, and also um, after Market Profile, he looked at volume spikes um, as his a real big indicator. He's one of the top guys that uh, I followed for quite a while since 1985. So um, that he's been really a neat little uh, um, uh, educator to educate when these things, these turning points can happen. So what happens is with this indicator then, the speed bars, is that they turn red against the overall ATR. That's a possible bottom. If it turns red against the ATR, against the green ATR, that's a possible bottom. So if you look here this morning, we had a lot. A lot of rolling position traders caught at this low. We had a lot of volume coming. I mean, there's a big volume spike coming in to the low on these lows, and then you get that big reversal. So the ATR started it off. What we look for is we look for the ATR to start us off. Yellow means we're not really in trend yet. Green mean, meaning we're trending. Now you can customize the indicator to only look at uh, trades that have major trend. I have this five minute. I mean, five sim chart, that's a longer time frame, so it doesn't move as fast. Um, I have it set for traders to um, um, with a 33 ATR to get a nice little trail. Um, I like that. I like that. You can make it tighter if you want. I kind of like the 33. It works well. It worked great yesterday. So um, if you look, what we try to do then is we, when we turn yellow to green, then that means green is trend. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to look for this red speed bar or a combination of red speed bars. Because once we get a combination of red speed bars or red speed bars, this is where we're trying to catch the wrongly positioned traders because they're trying to short the market. They're counter trend traders. If you know any trader that has been wiped out in the market, uh, typically they counter trend trade the market. We don't counter trend trade the market per se unless we're in a flat market. You can sell the high by the low with market profile. Um, this room is based upon trend retracements. We're trying to look for uh, exhaustion bottoms, exhaustion tops. So what this is then is this is we're looking for an exhaustion bottom at this low this morning at 740. That's our time of day trade to look for this 740, 745 um, and it caught the low. There's your reversal bar and you get moving. Um, so that's what uh, essentially what you try to do is you try to look for uh, you're looking for pullbacks with ATR trend, all right? And the best trades that uh, that that are the most highest reward trades you're going to get in this room are trying to get these exhaustion trades into major support right at the ATR, at the low. Uh, sometimes it exceed it by a bar, sometimes two bars, and then reverses. I don't like, per se, the two-bar close below the ATR, but the five-minute matched up with the three sim today. To really crank this thing up for 10 S&P points, it's still moving up, going on 11 S&P points. Okay, so um, you know, so that's what we do. Um, if you look down here, this oscillator, um, like I said, thank you to David, one of our long-term members, for add, for adding a. We've always had this oscillator to help you on pullbacks, but um, what David came up with a little bit is more visually uh, a trading. Is that we know that. The, the a pull in technique is a great way to do it where you get you get the there's your there's your reversal bar right there's your market delta spike a green reversal bar on our uh, proprietary Rinko bar there's our Rinko bar and then you get a green reversal to reverse the trade well what I like to see is I like to see a close above that uh, usually a doji or Rinko bar 
to give you confirmation it's moving. Well, this right here is a close above right there, that bar to give you confirmation that this WPT is going to hold the ATR. And then in a natural stop, um, traders can use um, the ATR as a natural stop or two ticks below what, what's called your setup bar. So I call it this. I call it the setup bar. I call this the setup. That's your reversal bar. All right, so there's your setup bar. Setup bar, and then your confirmation bar, or I call the trigger bar, is when it closes above that, that setup bar. Because that's giving you confirmation that WPT is going to hold. It's not going to blow through the ATR um, um, per se. So it gives you a high probability chance to win. So what we do is this is a trigger bar. All right. What, what, what visually, if you don't want to squint your eyes like, um, like David said, is that you can add another, uh, you can add another oscillator down here, another DS down here, and uh, the, the, the setting is 20 force on this uh, 80, 20, and 20. And what we want to do is, is if you can see when it crosses the, right there, when it crosses or closes, per, uh, closes above the 20, that's, the trigger bar. I mean, it's not exactly pure science where it's, uh, you know, I mean, it's not right on it all the time, but it's pretty close. So visually, you can see it's right there, and that it all depends on the speed of the market if it's going to be right on that bar or one bar past or one bar before it. So uh, it depends on the speed, how fast the market's moving. But typically, it's right there when you cross to the 20 for your trigger bar. So that makes things a little bit easier visually for you to see these setups. When you see a WPT come in with the ATR, there's your cross. Now, if I call this a cross trade because I have an 8 already on the DS for us, already shown in the room before we added the 20. And what that does, it gives you sort of a heads up because if you look right here, if you look at this a setup bar, and for you aggressive traders that want to try to get this low, it well, once you get above, I have it as 90-10. 90-10 is red, and then I added an 80-20 in magenta. So I had a match to match. I got the 20 match and the 20 to give you confirmation that sucker is rolling up or down. And then I got red to red if you want to be an aggressive trader and get in near these lows. So as you can see, my 8 went below my, my 10. It closed above the 10. This is confirmation to get into this market. If you want to aggressively push into the market, if you want to wait for confirmation, I want a trigger bar because <clears throat> Their accuracy is really uncanny because it, it it gets you out of those W bottoms and M top stops typically, uh, not unless you put it two ticks below the swing low and then you're holding in. But then you can use this oscillator going above 20 for confirmation. As you can tell, that's a really beautiful trade. I mean, you're looking at 81 and a half. The high right now is 94. We're talking about over 12 S&P potential points just upon this setup, and you had a defined risk already and to find entry without even thinking about it. All right, so uh, like Dave said, it's a KISS method. It really works quite well. So if you look at, at if you look at what happened with the 3SIM, the beautiful thing is this happened several times yesterday. When the 3SIM matches up with a 5SIM, now 3SIM is a lower time frame chart, so you get uh, uh, tighter stops and this beautiful setup when the 5 and 3SIM match. The same concept, though, you look at the WPT coming into the lows. So if you look at the WPT, if I take a look at when the WPT came in exactly when the five-minute chart came in, here's your low. Right here is your oscillator that if you wanted to take an aggressive move in the market, right at this low on the WPT, you can put your stop uh, eight ticks below that if you like. If you're trying to catch, if you're trying to catch the lows on these, keep your stop tight to seven to eight ticks. You don't need any more than that because you're trying to catch the bottom of the ATR. Uh, but um, but here's your confirmation bar. Same thing. If you look at it, there's your doji. I love when these dojis form. There's your doji. That the buyers between the sellers are equal. If I put that out, that's my setup bar right here, the doji. My trigger bar is going to be a close above the doji. Here's my trigger bar. It's a pop in this trade long. Beautiful. Like I said, 12-point setup move just happened uh, on this last trade setup we got. And here we are. So there's your Doge. Now take a look at um, look at how the it goes through the 20 at the same time, pretty much. 
your 20 is going through, your DS20 is going through the 20 right there for your trigger to pop in this market. And your stop loss can be two ticks below that swing low, or you can use a smaller stop if you like that also. So if I come up to, this also works on, um, this also works on um, retracements. So if I got a retracement a candle up here, I mean a triangle, this retracement candle, a triangle said, hey, let's, let's try to get long right here. Well, if I look at my, my DS down here, my oscillator, it says do not get, it's, it's, it's in the uh, overbought territory. We do not want to do that. But it's telling you we got momentum in the market coming to the upside. So what I want to do is I want to look for a retracement. There's your retracement. There's your oscillators down here. That's your aggressive cross if you want it right there to get long at this low for a retracement. So you can do it with the retracement also. There's my cross, my 8 cross. If you want to wait until the 20 crosses up, then your 20 entries right here, you've still got a nice target that just got filled. So that's a retracement. So you can use it both ways. You can use it for the WPT catching the wrongly positioned traders. And we can also use that oscillator down there for the retracement trades. Now what I am, I'm adding this into the algorithm. I, I, I've traded it live yesterday, actually. I traded it actually, I really over-traded yesterday. But um, I traded it quite a bit of times. And uh, it works really well uh, when you are using it with uh, the retracement trades and then also with your WPT trades. And so uh, you can use it, like I said, as a retracement indicator down here, this oscillator. Uh, with the uh, ATR, and you can also use it with the WPTs. All right, so that as far as uh, that's a great way to pull yourself in the market. Now, what you can do with these lows on the WPTs, okay, is when the 20 crosses over, when your oscillator crosses over after you get a buy set up or sell set up, you can use hotkeys. Now, some are using the hotkeys, and I had traders uh, uh, yesterday had some success with using hotkeys. Let me show you how that works real quick, how you set up a hotkey. Um, a hotkey is this, is if we use NinjaTrader, I'll make it smaller so you can see price action going on. Get this out of the way so you guys can watch price action. So there's the hotkey. So let's say we're trying to buy the WPT. It works really well in the five minute because the five minute, what happens with the five minute, you get that pull-in bar, right? You get that pull-in bar and the market literally retraces three to six ticks, right? You get that three to six tick retracement. So what you can do is you can set up hotkeys where you can say, hey, I want to put a limit order three ticks below my ask or three ticks above the bid to sell or two ticks or four ticks. So how you set up hotkeys is here's how I set my hotkeys up. You go to tools, you go to hotkeys. Okay, once you get hotkeys up, all right, you want to hit order entry. And we have this recorded if you want to look, know how to do it. You scroll down. So I got my hotkey as F5 and F8. It makes it easy for me to understand. Um, you want to hit add. So hotkey buy limit, it'll, uh, three ticks below the, the ask for buys. I got three ticks sell limit above the bid for sells. Um, you hit add. There's another WPT going on right now, guys. See that, how that cross right there? There's a live mover right there, guys. You see how they right there, the oscillator crosses here. 20 is crossing now, so just be aware of that. But let's take a look at the hotkey because you guys want to know how to do that. But if you look at um, on the hotkey, is that you hit add. Now, when you hit add, it says action by ourselves. So if you're trying to set up a buy hotkey, hit buy. You want to keep limit. I don't do limit offset. That's all based upon how far the limit is away from your stop. I don't do that one. Just keep that neutral. Um, but I do have, I do look, I do use this. So I hit buy, leave it at ask. Now I go minus because I want minus a certain number of ticks when I buy because I'm trying to buy the retracement when I get a signal. And you can put as many number of ticks you want in there. Once you do that, you put your number of ticks and you've got minus three ticks from the ask, you click this, it says click to record hotkey. And when you click this, it's going to start recording. And when you hit a hotkey, let's say of this level, I mean, I hit a hotkey of uh, F4. The hotkey specified is already in use by chart extended line. 
would you like to sign, uh, reassign this hotkey? Just hit yes. Once you hit yes, F4 is now assigned to my hotkey on, so every time you hit F4, you are assigned a buy limit of minus three ticks on a buy limit when you hit F4. Now, if you use your dome or if you use Chart Trader, you have to be clicked on Chart Trader. It's got to be your active workspace. Be aware of that. Make sure you're into your active workspace. If not, it's not going to work. That's the one thing with hotkeys. You've got to have be on your active workspace with your market, uh, your dome, or your uh, um, or, or your order entry. Okay, so that's how you do your hotkey. You, you go back and add your cell. So you add your cell. You go and hit cell. Now this time you want to hit bid and you want to hit plus because you're trying to go above the market to sell. You want plus, let's say three ticks. Then you hit your record. And I want to make, let's say, F2. And it says the hotkey is already in use. Hit yes. And then F2 is now your hotkey. Okay, you hit OK, you're good to go. That's not all you have to do though. So once you get your hotkeys in, these are programmed for me to buy in my account F5 and F8 to sell plus or minus three ticks if I want to do limit orders. In fast markets, I just hit the ask or hit the bid. Okay, um, if it's really moving, you won't get filled on these all the time, right? So you don't want to use hotkeys all the time, but on five minute charts, I mean five sim charts, I, I do like to use them because you almost always get a backfill of three to six ticks. So, and it saves you the headache of getting uh, taking heat right away on a trade. So after you do this, you hit OK. You, this is not enough though. Okay, you have to go back in and go to tools, and then you have to go down to options, and then under options you got to go to um, trading, and use order entry hotkeys. That has to be checked. If this is not checked and you're on your dome or you're on chart trader, it will not work. It has to be checked. Once you do that, your hotkeys are ready to go and it works great. Okay, so you know that's how we use our hotkeys. You can do that. All right.